Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Today, an account of an unusual method of solving crime. The psychic method. What it is and what it isn't, you'll soon find out. Crime has been in our history since the beginning of recorded time. Adam and Eve broke the law of the Garden of Eden. And not many pages later, Cain slew Abel. One might say the first psychic manifestation of a murder is in the Bible, where it is written, And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. I need a magician who knows how to make his own disappearing act. Not interested. Fifty thousand dollars interest you? No. A hundred thousand? Mm, perhaps. What's the scam? The carnival necklace. I need one of your magic tricks to make it disappear. Why, you cheap chiseler, those diamonds are worth two million. <laughs> mystery drama, The Devil's Bargain, adapted from a story by Guy Boothy, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr. and stars Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Solved them all. The disappearance of the Mona Lisa from the Louvre, the Fort Knox hijacking, a million in gold bars that never reached their destination, the theft of the historic crown jewels from the Tower of London. In each case, Otto Glazer undertook the task of finding the stolen valuables. And in each case, through much heralded psychic means, he eventually led the police to their reward. His fees were astronomically high. But since what he regained was priceless, no individual, insurance company, or nation felt defrauded. But let Otto Glazer speak for himself. So much had been said and written about my supernormal powers, some of it exaggerated, some true, that perhaps I'd become complacent, careless. And as a result, the way this case ended was quite a shock to me. It began at Heathrow Airport, London, on a Monday morning, when a distinguished son of the British nobility came to meet a no less distinguished son of the Arab nobility. Sheikh Maraki, welcome to England. Oh, Lord Carnovan, to what do I owe the pleasure of your company? I'm merely returning your hospitality when I came to Tehran last spring for the OPEC conference. To mingle friendships far is mingling bloods. <laughs> As your immortal Englishman William Shakespeare has said. Now I remember, you're still at it, quoting the bard. Practically every time we talked in Tehran. Well, even in my country, we recognize his poetic supremacy, Lord Carnival. I uh, suppose you find our new airport quite a change from what it used to be. Oh, yes, yes. So many billboards advertising products I am unfamiliar with. And uh, here, for instance, along this wall, uh, what is... Otto Glazer, no problem too small. <laughs> That's quite a story. <laughs> Is he a doctor, lawyer, or mind reader? You've come very close, Sheikh Maraki. This Glazer chap is rather a combination of all three. Well, shall we go? He certainly believes in advertising. Oh, please, do lead the way. My car is just outside these doors. Uh, allow me to escort you to your new home. Another five minutes and we'll be there. I meant to ask you, Sheikh Maraki, how did you happen to find a house to rent in such an excellent neighborhood? I had an agent here. I understand the house had been vacant for some time. I have wanted to live in London since I was at school at Oxford. Oh, we are turning into your street. I shouldn't look out of your window. Why not? Oh, dear me, no. A whole line of those dreadful posters advertising this glazer person. Oh, you were going to tell me who he was? Otto Glazer is probably the most prominent psychic detective in the world. 
He can find almost any stolen object that baffles the police. He's had amazing success. Better than your Scotland Yard? I've never known Glazer to fail. He says he's an authentic psychic. You come to his house, he listens to you behind a screen, and he'll tell you how to go about finding what's stolen. Why behind the screen? Oh, very few have ever seen him or know what he looks like. He's a master at changing his voice and disguising his entire appearance. Ah, this is it, Sheikh Maraki. Oh, Allah be praised. There is one of those posters on the front door next to mine. I regret it, but this Otto Glazer just happens to be your next door neighbor. Welcome home, Otto. Oh, I love you in the shake's outfit. You look marvelous. I've got a splitting headache. It's this darn headdress the Arabs wear. Oh, what a trip. Let me hear how you sound as an Arab. All right, like this. I am Sheikh Maraki. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Oh, wonderful, Arthur. Uh, you sound just like you look. I think I prefer you as an Arab Sheikh. Oh, so the trip was horrible. Unbelievable. The flight was late. Then I had to hide in the lavatory at the airport and change into this Sheikh's outfit. Then flying back to London with this tight headpiece. It better be worth it. But you wore an Arab headdress during the OPEC conference last spring. I detested that costume then also. But when one pretends to be a potentate to lay a trap for an Englishman, one can't be choosy about the bait. <laughs> Ancient Arab proverb. Now, Marisa, help me get out of this tent. It's 20 to 12, and if I don't hurry, my clients will become impatient. <laughs> Sheikh Maraki and I, Otto Glazer, are one and the same. Now, Marissa, you should know, was no ordinary assistant, but the daughter of the great Marvello, that extraordinary magician and escape artist who had little run-in with the law from which I rescued him. When Marvello retired comfortably, out of gratitude, Marissa became my assistant. Uh, quite a clever and dedicated young lady. In three minutes and thirty seconds, I had changed my tweeds, a distinguished false moustache and matching grey wig. Come along there, Marisa. Open the wardrobe door. Well, go on, go on. The key keeps turning, but doesn't catch. Well, are you sure you have the right key? Of course I'm sure. This is the key for the wardrobe that we always use. It just doesn't this whole operation breaks apart because I can't get through this secret door to the adjoining house. I can't believe it. Well, I am trying. I have your father build me this wardrobe right up against the wall in a matching wardrobe in the adjoining house on the same floor against the same wall. It's supposed to be foolproof so I can get from one house to the other with nobody knowing. No need to get nasty, Otto. Here. Do you want to try the key? Now, look, I have clients waiting on the other side of this wall. Wait. Wait, wait, wait I've got it. Oh, there, oh. you see. All you need is a little patience. I've opened it. Well, you'd better get your father on the phone and find out why I can't rely on his lock. In two hours, I'll have seen all my 15-minute cheapy clients, and I'll want to get back here through this hidden door. What if I can't open it from the other side? Well, then why not walk out of Otto Glazer's front door, make a short flight, and go into the front door of this house? They're both yours. Well, I know that, and you know that, but I don't want anyone else in London to know that. Oh, please, Marissa, don't be so dense. You tell your dad the lock sticks or doesn't catch or whatever, and I want it fixed. Oh, what an ex... Who is it, dining room, Lady Carnarvon? Authentic Georgian of the period, as a matter of fact. But I simply can't begin to tell you how pleased we are you joined us for dinner on your first night in London, Sheikh Maraki. Ah, I was equally pleased to find your husband at the airport this morning. Oh, he's done nothing but talk about you since he came home from Tehran in April. I'm going to ring for the soup. And then I want you to tell me, quite confidentially, do you think 
the price of oil is going to go up again this year? You may as well, Eustace. Uh, will oil go up in price? Oh, Lady Carnovan, surely it does not affect people of your station? Well, not really. Uh, Hubert tells me that you went to Oxford. All my family have been educated abroad. Oxford is where I developed my taste in Indian art. You too? Oh, then you simply must go to the Victoria and Albert Museum to see the Gosport paintings. I know them quite well. I must show the Sheik our jewel box. I suppose you have heard of the Carnivore necklace. Ah, who has not, Lady Carnivore? Even where I come from, a necklace worth two million is quite a conversation piece. I gave it to Hermione on our 25th anniversary. Uh, the box in which I keep the diamond necklace is pure second century Indian. I'm sure you will appreciate it, Sheik. I should not mind seeing the necklace either. Uh, I don't know whether I mentioned it, but uh, one of the reasons I'm here is to gather material on Indian art. Uh, perhaps I might borrow your antique jewel case one day and have it photographed for my book. Absolutely. Beauty is to be shared. Uh, this box is covered in ancient carvings. Almost an exact replica of the Nativity of Buddha done in limestone at the British Museum. Oh, yes, that one. Is it still on exhibit? You know it. I own it. Also on loan, of course. Splendid. Oh, we shall arrange for you to have a good look at our old wooden jewel box. It's, uh, it's uh, unique. Marissa, this is not going to be a simple swindle. I've got to be very careful, cover my tracks like a cat and make no waves. In and out of his lordship's front door and that clumsy Arab get-up. But how to grab the necklace, that's what bugs me. You see, it's kept in the bank, except when Lady Carnarvon's wearing it. After whatever party, she takes it off and keeps it in her... Oh, of course. Keeps her necklace in what? Marissa, that's the answer. The carved box she puts it in. Listen, get your father over here first thing in the morning. He's got the answer. Now you see it, now you don't. That's what I use, your father's great act. The great Marvello's disappearing act. Of course. At least we know who is who and what is what. That Sheik Maraki is one of Otto Glazer's disguises. That this so-called psychic actually engineers thefts and then by pretending paranormal abilities hands back what he's already stolen. What trickery, duplicity, hanky-panky. I could go on, but sticks and stones won't break this artful dodger's bones. What will? What does? Join me in here when I return shortly with Act Two. I think all of us are fascinated by the machinations of the unscrupulous. We like to be let in on the doings of those for whom the straight and narrow is a tool with which to pick a lock. For now, the world believes Otto Glazer has extraordinary see-through eyes, unusual mental powers, and divining insight. It may turn out, unknown to himself, he may actually have those gifts. But in the meantime, give him credit. He's latched onto a good thing. Good morning, Marvello, old chap. Daddy, what are you doing with that crossword puzzle? I know. What's a seven-letter word for how a person feels having to arise early in the morning and hustle out of his dwelling when he had planned to sleep late? Uh, look, Marvello, I didn't get you out of bed to help you with a crossword puzzle. That seven-letter word is unhappy. I'll have you know. I am unhappy that my morning rest is disturbed by a psychic chiseler. Now come off it, you old fraud. Would you be unhappy to make 50,000? Yes. 75,000? Definitely not interested. Supposing your cut was 100,000? 
Not so definitely not interested. 150,000. Cash on the battlehead. Let's say one week after you deliver. Daddy, we don't want you to be unhappy. 175,000, that's my final offer. No, it isn't. You need me. Make it two. And my unhappiness will vanish. Done. What's the scam? The Carnivan necklace. Why, you conniving con, that's worth two million, maybe more. The insurance company won't cough up at 50% of the value. And all you're giving me is 200,000. Take it or leave it, Marvello. I'll take it. All right. We have three options to lift the diamonds. One, when Lady Carnivan is wearing the necklace at some ball or dinner party, snatch them. But the hue and cry, you'd never get away. No, no that's not good. I agree. Option two, when the old gal takes it off at night. However, it goes immediately into a carved box, which is put into his lordship's wall safe to spend the night. The Doberman pinchers are let loose, and in the morning, the bank's armored car picks up the box and takes it to the vault. Uh, which leaves us with the third and last option. Which is? Marvello, do you remember your now you see it, now you don't routine? You mean the disappearing donkey trick when I used to put a donkey into a box stall and press to change your row and behold, no donkey? Yes. Tell you what I have in mind. And as soon as I got your call, I rushed right over. I have told my publishers they will be having quite a surprise in the chapters dealing with ancient carved Indian art. Oh, I am thrilled, Sheikh Mariki. I lie awake at night wondering whether your jewel casket has on it the dream of the Maya and the miraculous birth in the Lumbini Garden. You will see. I've got it here. No. Yes. One of the clasps is loose, so I had it sent over from the bank. The jeweler is upstairs this very minute, mending it. I shall have him put it into the box and have it brought down so that you can have a look. I shan't bore you by repeating the size of the necklace, the size of the blue-white diamonds, how many. You've heard it often. The box was of some dark wood, harder than teak. I'd say about 16 inches long, 12 wide, and 8 deep. Lady Carnivan unlocked the lid, and there, inside, on a quilted bed of Russian leather, lay the necklace. It was all I could do to keep from grabbing it and running. That would have been a stupid thing to do. Oh, well, I was hypnotized, Marissa. I wasn't myself. You haven't been yourself for 25 years. Oh, you? stop it. My most important role is myself. Otto Glazer, psychic spy and detective. Once we have made the carnival necklace disappear, Otto Glazer will step forward and with trance-induced vision and for a slight fee, he will locate and return the missing anniversary present. Marvella, you will take up residence here until the job is done. To start you off, Lady Carnivan permitted me to make some measurements of the jewel box inside and out. And here also is a sketch I've made for you. Very helpful. Now all I want you to do is to come up with an adaptation of your illusion of the disappearing donkey. For $200,000, I could make a dinosaur disappear. Why did you send for me, Lady Carnival? Uh, Sheikh, uh, do you remember a few days ago you were admiring the workmanship of my jewel box? And I told you the day I'd be wearing the necklace, you might borrow the box to have photographed for your book. Oh, I've never forgotten your words. Well, that day is today. Look at this. A note from the Queen's equerry requesting the pleasure of the company of Lord and Lady Carnarvon for dinner at Buckingham Palace. Oh, congratulations. When is the night? Tonight. Oh. So I've had the necklace sent over from the vault. Here is the box. I am overcome. Go on. Go 
on, take it. It won't bite you. I've only one request, and that is, may I please have it back before the day is over? Oh, absolutely. Yes, you see, when I return from the palace tonight, I place my necklace inside. The box goes right into Hubert's wall safe. We let the dogs loose to patrol the grounds, and in the morning, the armored bank car fetches it. You shall have the box back today without fail. Marvello. Marvello, here's the box. There. Can you do it? Push it across the table. How's it open, Otto? Well, here's the key. Uh, tell you what I'm going to do. I'll refit the inside, placing springs between the side panels and the lining. Those will be geared to the lock so that when the key is turned, the springs relax. It's exactly the same principle I used making the donkey disappear in a four-by-six-foot stall. Only here... Save it, Marvello. Don't tell me how. Just tell me if and when. We have nine hours. What ifs? What ifs? No ifs. I've already made the mechanism from the measurements you gave me. Nine hours. I can do it in three. Otto, do you think Daddy's a genius? If he can make a necklace disappear as easily as a donkey before sunset, I'd certainly agree with you. It's five o'clock now. He said three hours. I knew he couldn't do it in that time. What do you mean? Daddy's been taking a nap since lunch. The box is finished. He's done it. Well, didn't you know? How can I be expected to rest with all this racket going on? My dear fellow, I think this retirement has gone to your head. Don't you have something to show me? What? Show me how it works. Otto, don't scold Daddy. I am about to open this box. Will someone from the audience be good enough to step forward? Ah, I see a gentleman in a tweed suit and a gray wig, gray mustache and gray sideburns standing over there. Will you kindly step forward, sir? Ah, that's right. Now, will you be good enough to examine this box? An extraordinary bit of workmanship, I agree. Elaborately carved outside, tastefully leather-lined inside. Now, sir, if you would be so good as to hand it back to me, and also your wristwatch, uh, don't worry, you'll get it back. The great Marbello only steals diamond watches. <laughs> ah, thank you, sir, thank you, thank you. Now, please observe closely. I place your watch into this box. Close the lid. Will you be good enough to turn the little key, sir? Good. Now, I hand to you the box. Please, turn the key and unlock it. Fine, you're doing so splendidly, sir. Now, please, open the lid. What do you see inside? Your wristwatch? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. The watch has disappeared. What? It's gone. It's gone, Marvello, you old magician. You've done it. Daddy, I knew you were a genius. <laughs> Look at me. I'm shaking the box. You can't hear a thing and nothing rattles. Nobody would know. When the key is turned, Otto, the inside quilting parts and the object drops to a padded bottom. When the lid is opened, the sides are sprung neatly together and the box appears empty. But... It can only be done once. Well, you don't mean it's in there forever, do you? I'll show you how to take the works apart, Otto. Take out the levers and the springs, and no one will know it's been tampered with. You can do it in 30 seconds. You can do it in 30 seconds. It may take me a little longer. Now, uh, may I have my watch back? brings you here at this hour. It's six o'clock. Oh, Hubert, um, your wife loaned me this jewel box to have photographed for my book, and I promised she would have it back today. Isn't that just like Hermione? Never told me a thing. The whole house is agog because the queen said come from me. Thank you. I'll see she gets it. What time is it, Marisa? Otto, will you drink your breakfast tea and stop? Checking your watch? It's eight o'clock. Nah, won't be long now. My educated psychic guess is that in about ten seconds we shall have a visitor. 
On the button. There's our visitor. Marissa, is my putty nose arm straight? The darn hake on my head, huh? You look fine. The most beautiful Arab since Valentino. It's Lord Carnarvon. They've discovered the empty jewel box. Now, listen. In 15 minutes, I shall come knocking at Otto Glazer's front door. You will open it and say that Mr. Glazer is out of town, but expected back at 12 for his daily clients. Yes, of course. Now, up to the dressing room with you and through the wardrobe into my house next door. I hope your father fixed that lock so it works. Why, Hubert, Lord Carnarvon, what are you doing here so early in the morning? Oh, or did you ask me that question yesterday? Oh, Sheik, terrible, terrible. Oh, dear me, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. Uh, please, come along here, Hubert, to the library. Uh, can I get you something, a brandy? No, 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 Sheik, thank you. I've got to keep a cool head. Oh, you alarm me, Hubert, I've never seen you like this. Did something happen at the Queen's dinner party? Uh, no, 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 no. That went perfectly normally. Uh, 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 no, it's nothing to do with the Queen, thank heaven. Bless her. It's the necklace. Not the necklace? It's gone. Missing. Oh. Disappeared. It was Hermione. It was her idea. I come straight here and speak to you. Yes, but what have I got? Oh, dear me. I did not somehow... Damage this gorgeous box, did I? No, 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 the box is all right. I'll begin at the beginning. We come back from the palace last night. Hermione takes off the necklace, gives it to me. I put it in the box, lock the box, place it in the safe, loose the dogs. Anyway, this morning at seven, the bank guards arrive. Hermione opens the box for a last look. No necklace. Ah, oh, that seems dreadful. Uh, what did your wife believe I could do? Obviously, our first thought called Scotland Yard. Then I had a better idea, old man. A much better idea. Your neighbor, Otto Glazer. Oh, yes. Glazer. Uh, would you, Shake, as his next door neighbor, ask him to take on this case, but in utter secrecy? Frankly, I think this is the kind of crime that cries for supernatural or at least supernormal detective work. Well, if you think I can really help... Oh, we do. Both Hermione and I, we beg you. In that case, Hubert, I'm certainly at your service. Let us go next door and see Otto Glazer at once. <laughs> What Lord Hubert Carnarvon does not know is that the famous diamond necklace is still in his house. Still inside the antique Indian jewel case. We're about to see the great Otto Glazer in action. What will he do now? He must remove two things from his lordship. The necklace and a ransom. Of course, Glazer calls it a finder's fee, but whatever you call it, it must be of sufficient size to make all the play acting and disguises worth the effort. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. It is Act Three, the one in which we learn who wins, who loses, who's caught, who escapes. One caution. This is radio theater, not fact. So we can all take the events with a grain of salt and a smile. If you remember that, friends, you won't feel indignant if the imposter succeeds. The flim-flam man makes it. It is moments later at the front door of Otto Glazer's residence. Disguised as Sheikh Meraki, Otto Glazer presses the button of his own doorbell. I beg your pardon? What do you gentlemen want? Is uh, Mr. Otto Glazer at home? And uh, if he is, would you tell him Lord Carnovan and Sheik Maraki would like to see him? He isn't. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, when do you expect him? At noon. Uh, come back at 12 o'clock. No problem is too small for Mr. Glazer. Oh, whatever shall I do now? May I suggest you allow me to deal with Mr. Glazer? Oh, my dear Sheikh, would you? I will tell him what I know and persuade him to visit you this afternoon. 
but I had better make sure you know it is Otto Glazer and not some charlatan who may have heard of the necklace's disappearance. Ah, I tell you what, I will give him a password. Uh, what shall it be? Something from Shakespeare? Oh, good idea. Uh, a phrase, uh, 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 what comes to your mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A diamond gone cost me 2,000 ducats. Merchant of Venice. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'll know he's the man if he says that. Oh, this is also upsetting. I'm sure the necklace will be recovered. I am told the mind of this Otto Glazer is so penetrating, he can actually locate a real needle in a real haystack. Uh, you are Otto Glazer, sir. I am. You are Lord Carnarvon. You wish to see me. Do you have a message for me? Yes. A diamond gone cost me 2,000 ducats. Mr. Glazer, I'm delighted to meet you. Unfortunately, Lady Carnarvon cannot be here. She was quite beside herself with worry, so I have sent her off to the country with a doctor friend of mine. But I can tell you everything. You don't suspect anyone in your household, I suppose? Not a soul. This theft is such a mystery that we don't know what to think. The servants? Well, they're as innocent as I am, I'm positive. Can you remember what happened this morning when you discovered the necklace missing? The telephone rang at seven. It was the bank. The armored car would be here at ten past. I unlocked my safe, removed the box, put it on the table of my study, and went upstairs to say good morning to my wife. I couldn't have been out of the room more than ten minutes. My wife came down with me. The guards from the bank arrived, and then Hermione, that's my wife, she said to me, I suppose you've looked to see if the necklace is all right. I said, how could I? You have the key. And then? She took the key, opened the box, and the necklace was gone. I don't know if you're familiar with the way I work, Lord Carnarvon. I have a vague idea. It's called psychometry, picking up psychic vibrations from the surroundings at the scene of the crime. I shall wish to see the box first, then your safe. Uh, they are both together, the empty box and the empty safe. I'll show you. I also make it a policy to accept payment for my services in advance. The amount is 50% of the value of the item to be recovered. 50%? That's rather steep. Is the necklace insured? I'm afraid not. Even Lloyd's felt such an extravagant piece of jewelry in private hands was not insurable. Well, it's up to you to decide, Lord Carnarvon. If you feel the yard can find it before it's broken up in separate stones and sent out of the country, then, of course, you'll have it back at no cost. The police make no charge. However... It I... hadn't occurred to me that possibility, the necklace being broken up and each stone sold separately. What would you say the necklace is worth? Oh, a million. You sure? Is that all? Well, perhaps closer to two. Then you're aware of my fee. Suppose you don't find it. Well, that's possible. Then you've only lost a million. It's your gamble, Lord Carnarvon. You wouldn't let me out of the house. I barely reached the front door when Lord Carnarvon called me back. Made out a bank draft for a million. Called his bank to verify and led me to his open safe and the carved jewel box. I asked to be left alone. In less than a minute, I, re I removed the necklace from the false bottom, took out the springs and levers, and put the necklace in my pocket. Half an hour later, I bid Lord Carnarvon adieu and told him he would be hearing from me. Otto, I have never seen anything like this necklace. Oh, look at it sparkle. It could light up a city. Oh, what next? Well, now it so happens the house next door to Lord Carnarvon's is up for sale. It's exactly as the block we live on with the identical houses side by side and an entire row of them. I shall disguise myself as a retired elderly army officer and you shall be my nurse. And you and I shall go there to make some inquiries about the house for sale. <laughs> Well, this is the place. Well, come along, nurse. Hand me my cane and help me out. Uh, uh, mind my injured leg, nurse. Uh. You 
see, Marissa? That's Lord Conovan's house next door. Yes, but what am I supposed to do? Follow instructions and follow my lead. Yes? Oh, Colonel Riley presents his compliments. This is my nurse. I understand this house is for sale. Yes, it is. Uh, I'd be happy to show you about. Uh, there's a gentleman for you. Uh, uh, when I see you, you've got a napkin about your neck. Are we interrupting your dinner? Well, I was just sitting down for a bite, but I can have that later. It's only seven o'clock. No, 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 I wouldn't hear of it. Interfere with a man at trial time. Uh, why don't you just let us wander about the house and, uh... Oh, caretaker, uh, do take these few coins as a token of my appreciation. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Uh, do come in. Come in. Just switch on the lights in whichever room you wish to see. Now, this room, I believe, is on the same floor as Lord Carnarvon's bedroom. This, uh, this is what I'm going to do. Begin by opening this window. Now, if you look out, there's quite a wide coping that runs below this window and attaches itself to an identical coping on Lord Carnarvon's house, which is smack dab against this one, right? But it's pretty dark out there. Ah, just what I need not to be noticed. What I'm about to do, Marissa, is engineer a series of false clues, which later the police will believe is how the necklace was stolen. Now, I take my trusty old walking stick and I pull and pull. See? It becomes three times as long. Now, I remove my right shoe, into which I've had a metal screw hole attached, and into it, I screw the very end of the extended, collapsible walking stick. I want you to stand guard by the door while I'm balancing myself like a human fly. Yes, but you haven't explained what you're going to do with your shoe attached to the end of that long pole. I'd better tell you when I get back. Marissa. Marissa, give me a hand over the window ledge. I made it. I did it. Ah, now, quick. Pull down the window while I put my shoe back on. Ooh, I'm glad that's over. I tried watching you out of the window, but it was so dark I simply couldn't see anything. I made my way along the coping and then made certain there was no one in the bedroom in which Carnarvon's butler sleeps. Then, with this telescopic walking stick and the shoe attached, I made footprints in the dust along the ledge back to where I was kneeling. That's all. That's it. How long was I gone? Oh, uh, five minutes. Good. Downstairs we go. Bye-bye to the caretaker. We'll be in touch. And back to our house. Well, he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa Marvello. I do believe I have this time pulled off a really big one. Oh, you do, do you? Do you all alone, eh? Daddy. He's such a big shot, this psychic faker. Where would you be if I hadn't made my disappearing donkey box? Marvello, old chap, you got paid, didn't you? I still have to do my psychic act and find the necklace and bring it over to Hubert, a Lord Carnival. You know what? I haven't even seen the darn necklace. That's right, you haven't. I'm sorry, chum. I got it right here in my pocket. I... Uh, my other pocket? My... my inside pocket? Oh, no, Otto, you didn't lose it. No, 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 let me think. Let me retrace my steps. Uh, what did I do... When I left Carnarvon's... Ladies and gentlemen, for the final feat of Monsieur de Mans of the evening... Will you shut up, you has-been? I'm trying to think. Has-been, eh? For my final act of the evening, a drink to your health with diamonds. Daddy, stop. Stop him. Marissa, why'd you knock my glass out of my hand? Look on the floor. Daddy had the necklace in his glass of champagne. Has-been, eh? I tell you, old chap, I'm sorry to see you go. If it hadn't been for you, Sheikh Maraki, I owe everything to you. Oh, no. Your friendship has paid for everything. 
The necklace is back in your house, and uh, in time, as your great Shakespeare has said, all doers of evil will be punished. The thieves will be caught. You should have been there, Shake, to see how this extraordinary Otto Glazer went straight to my window. His psychic super senses led him to it. There on the ledge were footprints leading to the house next door. Amazing. Then Glazer alerted the police. They interrogated the caretaker, and sure enough, a man disguised as an army officer had gone into that house, perhaps even to pick up the necklace from a hiding place. How he did it, I don't know, but that great man returned to me the necklace this morning. Lady Carnival must have been overjoyed. What an extraordinary man to have such psychic power. I would not like to pit my wits against his. <laughs> I did, Shake. And I came out pretty well, if I do say so myself. Oh, how do you mean? I gave him a million for his fee, which he thought was half the value of the necklace. Actually, it's worth four million. <laughs> so you see, psychic or not, to quote our old friend, I think I rather got the best of the devil's bargain. I told you at the start, perhaps I'd become too complacent, too careless. I had to face it. Oh, Lord Carnivan had cheated me. Not only that, he'd insulted my profession. So, I shall just have to steal the diamond necklace again. Perhaps I should feel guilty telling you a tale of an innocent victim losing and the guilty party gaining. But I look at it this way. Otto Glazer was a kind of Robin Hood who robbed the wealthy to be charitable to the poor. Only he believed true charity begins at home. I'm not saying every time you meet up with someone with psychic powers to beware, but to be careful, never hurt anyone. I'll be back shortly. course, true psychics. Their powers have been documented and centuries ago have even been foretold. Back to the Bard, his very last play, The Tempest, and his thoughts on the supernormal. He said, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At picked leisure, which shall be shortly, I'll resolve to you some answers which to you shall seem probable. Did Bill Shakespeare know something we don't? Our cast included Robert Dryden, Joan Shea, Gordon Heath, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant 